Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Drew Geraci. This is a follow-up video to an unboxing video I did uh, showcasing the new Dell UP3221Q. Fantastic monitor. This video is going to be all about talking about some of the technical aspects of it, as well as some real-world experiences that I've encountered uh, dealing with HDR footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's just kick it off. Let's talk about some of the stats with this monitor because I know there are a lot of comments um, in the previous video, and I want to make sure that I answer and address all of those um, concerns. Uh, so we put this through the Kalman uh, calibrator as well as the data color calibrator, and they all came up with pretty much um, similar results, which is expected, and uh, we hope that's what it comes up with. Um, but just starting off uh, for the color gamuts, the DCI P3 range is 99.8%, sRGB is 100%. Adobe RGB is at 93%, and the BT2020 clocked in at about 83.5%, which is right about what Dell um, had anticipated. If we look at some of the other um, monitors that Dell has currently on, uh, on lineup, um, those only range in about the 76 to 78 percentage for BT2020. Um, this monitor does offer a quite a large um, amount of percentage higher than those other monitors that are out there right now. Um, and especially for grading BT2020, this is a pretty acceptable range. Um, it's really important to uh, mention that there's really no monitor on the consumer marketplace right now that covers 100% of the BT2020 cover space. Uh, but the UP3221Q does offer um, one of the best ranges that's currently out there without a doubt. If you are looking to get that 100% coverage of BT2020, you'll probably have to invest in a uh, very expensive scientific monitor, which is likely going to end up costing you tens of thousands of dollars at the end of the day. Um, and for $5,000, this is a money maker of a, uh, a monitor. If you're doing any kind of grading with inside of uh, DaVinci Resolve or of other video programs, NLEs that are out there, um, as well as uh, program software, um, the HDR that comes out of this is really, really impressive. Um, and when we get to the actual talking about when I actually use this on some, uh, some test work, um, I was actually blown away um, by the difference of this monitor versus another HDR monitor that I was using currently. Um, but back to this monitor with some of the, the, uh, the basic stats. Um, one of the big things when you purchase a monitor is you want to look for screen uniformity. Uh, and this comes from the brightness and luminance um, of the monitor, which is great because this one has a 2000 mini LED backlit display, which really creates a beautiful uniformity across the screen. Um, we tested this out with all 12 sectors and it scored at 99.1% in uniformity, which is incredibly high. Um, some of the other monitors that I've been using in the past only scored in the range of 79 to, uh, to 85%. So it's really a huge leap um, with all of those mini LED LED backlights um, in play. So kudos to Dell for that. Next, I want to talk about the brightness range. Um, at the most, it ranged a difference of 1.7%, uh, uh, and the average was a 0.9% across the board, which is really acceptable. Now let's talk about color replication of this monitor when it comes to the delta E value, um, which is to showcase how close a perceived color is to another color. Um, and the UP3221Q scored an average of 0.4, which is damn impressive. Um, theoretically, Anything that's below a 2.0 is considered a solid grading monitor. Being at 0.4, this monitor um, is really accurate when it comes to um, deciphering all of those individual colors. So if you are looking for a monitor that's going to give you um, the closest color replication, this monitor definitely has that ability to do that. Um, and I can say firsthand after editing um, and grading a few different clips for a, a few clients of mine, I can say that this is probably one of the best uh, color calibrating monitors I've ever used, um, not just for Rec. 709, but also for BT2020. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of that in a little bit. Uh, now, one question I got was about the ABL or the automatic brightness levels of this monitor. Um, I honestly do not know. I contacted Dell to ask them about the L uh, ABL if it was present. Um, I suspect that it is because I have noticed that when I switch applications, if I'm going from DaVinci Resolve to Premiere um, or to another program, I do see the monitor dimming um, up and down depending on what program it is. Uh, now, I will say that as I've been using it, it hasn't dimmed at all during the actual playback of footage or anything like that. So I think it's more application-based than it is just scene-based. Um, but I'll get back to you guys uh, with a firm answer from Dell um, once I know a little bit more. Now, um, one of the concerns, too, was that the HDR um, wasn't playing back correctly, that they, when they turned the HDR monitor on, um, that this monitor in particular was just no contrast. They couldn't see the mouse. 
Um, and I really want to address that because if you've never used an HDR monitor before, you're really not going to understand what HDR looks like when you're looking at it on an SDR um, platform. Now, Windows 10 is an SDR platform, which means that if you're looking at something, uh, expecting it to be popped uh, or popping with color and very vibrant, you're not going to get that because uh, Windows 10 itself is not um, HDR. So you will see that there's no contrast. You will see that the mouse disappears almost in the background because there's no HDR. Um, one of the things that you can do to test to see how well your screen um, holds up in HDR is going to YouTube and doing a nice little search for some HDR content. And there's um, probably a couple dozen different videos out there that really showcase how well HDR uh, performs on different monitors. Uh, and you will notice a stark um, difference when you're viewing it on the HDR screen versus the SDR screens. Um, and I'm going to show you a little example of that uh, right now. This is just a big difference of what you actually view when you're viewing HDR. And while you can't actually see um, the HDR in this video, because HDR can only be seen live through your own eyes, but you can see that you get more detail, you get more color, you get more separation between those uh, dynamic ranges uh, for highlights, midtones, and shadows. It really brings out those shadows so you're able to see the whole scene and not just a compressed screen that you know almost looks like it's 8-bit and not 10-bit or above. So let's talk about some real world experiences. I've been using this monitor for the past month or so um, on a couple different commercial projects and um, HDR doesn't really come up that often, but for one project that I've been working on, HDR did come up. And I really have to say, I was using an LG uh, monitor. Um, I actually don't know the specification off the top of my head, but it was a HDR10 monitor. I thought, wow, this is this monitor is going to be great. When I hooked up the new Dell UP3221Q uh, um, and compared it side by side, I was literally blown away by how bad of a color job um, I was doing with the LG uh, compared to the Dell. Um, and really, it's just opened up a whole um, I want to say a rabbit hole of, of new things that I'm learning with HDR. Um, and I am by no means a, a colorist or um, a scientific professional when it comes to HDR, but utilizing HDR correctly for the first time, it's, it's really an eye-opening experience. And um, there's a lot that I still have to learn, but with this monitor, um, I'm able to actually grade the way that I'm um, intending to grade or wanting to grade for HDR projects, especially when I want to put it out for um, color spaces like BT2020 uh, or HGL. Um, and there's a lot of cameras that I'm shooting with these days, uh, whether it's through Sony or Arri um, or RED. Um, all of these cameras offer those different types of color spaces so that you can actually do um, full-blown HDR. And it's great to have a monitor that can accurately um, replicate those colors, um, what you're seeing or actually what you're not seeing um, back to you through the monitor. Cats. So here's some example of HDR footage that I've been working on. This was shot with the Sony A7S III um, in S-Log3 mode. Uh, you can notice that there is a pretty um, stark contrast between uh, being able to see the, the full background, middle ground, and foreground, and really bringing out those mid-tone um, shadows and highlights. And then on the SDR monitor, you'll notice that everything is a little bit more compressed, tight, and you can't really see everything. Uh, overall, this monitor is really impressive. Um, it is truly meant for um, HDR mastering, whether you're doing it through programs, video game design, or uh, if you're using it for um, what I use it for, video production, um, this monitor is really going to help elevate your HDR to the next level and, and do it accurately. Uh, now, there were a lot of questions talking about, you know, uh, why doesn't this have HDMI 2.1, uh, or why doesn't it have uh, SDI cables, or why doesn't it have 120 hertz? These are all great questions, um, and I'd love to talk to Dell about that. And I also think that I'd love to see these incorporated into this monitor or future monitors that come down the line. Uh, I really think an SDI port in this uh, this monitor would really help, especially if you're on set or you're in a location where you want to hook it up to um, another a camera of some sort uh, so you can actually see that color replication back in that monitor in real time. So Dell, if you're listening, let's throw some SDI cables uh, or ports on this because uh, that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, and I would also like to see um, 120 hertz at a minimum on this monitor, especially if you're paying $5,000. Um, I would think that you should be able to put uh, and use 120 hertz uh, rather than just 60 hertz because I think overall that would help um, utilize this monitor for more than just color grading. Uh, granted, this is exactly what this monitor is meant for, um, but it would be great to have 120 hertz because who wouldn't want to play, you know, uh, Call of Duty <laughs> at 120 hertz on this monitor? Uh, but I really wouldn't recommend it, uh, especially for $5,000. Not the best, uh, not the best investment for that. Um, 
that being said, I think there's so many wonderful things about this monitor and just being able to utilize it over the past month. I've learned so much about HDR. I've learned so much about you know, how the monitor works and how it talks to other programs. Um, and it's really, it's really refreshing. Uh, there's still a lot that I have to learn. And uh, when I you know, come up with something else, I will share with you guys my experience and I'll let you know um, what I find out. Uh, but overall, if you're experiencing um, you know, FOMO, get this monitor. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> it is, it's absolutely uh, changed the way I edit um, and look at color. And if you really are in the professional field where you're making money off of what you do, whether that's through uh, videographic services or you're doing uh, animation color uh, within inside of After Effects or other uh, animating programs, this monitor is amazing. So um, really take a look at it. Um, it is worth the investment, I will say. Um, but overall, this is not meant for um, photography. Um, if you look at the levels, it only has uh, like a 95% or 94% color space for um, Adobe RGB. So this monitor really isn't meant for photography. You can use the sRGB mode, but if you're looking to print off of it, this isn't the one to use. Uh, Dell does offer a bunch of other monitors um, that are meant specifically for um, Adobe RGB and printing, so you might want to go check those out instead. Uh, but if you are in the mode, if you are in the mood for uh, HDR video uh, and uh, color grading in the uh, DCI P3 range, definitely get this monitor. It is 100% worth it. Now, if you guys have any other questions, if you want to have me put it through some more tests, um, happy to do that. Happy to share um, any kind of color information I can um, or results with you um, if what you saw today wasn't enough. Um, again, this really wasn't a thorough technical aspect of it. I did spend about four or five days going through each of the different coloring um, modes and uh, calibrating it and then checking and testing uh, and it really you know from what I'm uh, from my knowledge it, it came across as being a very um, excellent uh, monitor so uh, that being said if you like we saw please um, like subscribe and if you have any questions put them down below uh, and until next time happy shooting thanks for joining me guys